Hello. If you have not seen this video, or the video for this hike, check out our channel. The video is somewhere, and it's very good. Yeah, because I made it. <laughs> but here are the 10 things we wish we knew before we started to hike. I'm gonna leave the other half to count because I'm not counting and talking at the same time. So number one, at some point, somewhere, someday, you are gonna get wet. And it's not about the gear that you've got. It's just going to happen. You can have the best boots. They're gonna get soaked. They're gonna get wet at some point. We have been soaked many times. And at uh, one point you just come to terms with it. There's not much that you can do. If you get caught in the rain and you don't have anything to prevent or delay the inevitable of being wet, just own it. At the moment, both of my shoes or trainers are completely soaked and we still got another three miles to go. And it's just what it is. Number two, in conjunction with getting wet, the most expensive gear. It's not always the best gear. You can have really expensive jacket, which I do, and it didn't bode really well in uh, heavy rain or persistent heavy rain. You can have the best boots or expensive boots. And again, same thing, it's gonna happen. You know, you can carry around a, a mountaineering tent that, you know, suitably fits three to five people, but you're gonna be lugging around 12 kilos. So yeah, the best is not always, well, the most expensive is not always the best. That links into there's no such a thing as bad gear. That's number four. No yeah, so uh, that's pretty good. Uh, whoa, number four. Well, what happened to number three? <sighs> Apparently I can't count. I mean, to be fair, I did tell the other half to uh, you know, count the numbers for me, but apparently I can't count to 10 or at least follow all the numbers. So here's number three. Number three is the simple things that matter. So we tend to hike and the food that we carry is home food. So we carry beans, meat, uh, maybe, you know, some wraps. We could, I mean, we see quite a lot. People will carry, you know, these uh, dehydrated food pouches. They're really expensive. And for the hikes that we do, we're not doing ultra marathon hikes, uh, very long distance. So for us, it's the commodities, uh, the simple things. Things like having a phone with you with some batteries. I know you're gonna have a phone with you, but download some movies and download some music. Uh, you might not have any signal. And it's always nice to, at the end of the hike, just sit and appreciate the view with the little things. So yeah, don't get bogged down <laughs> uh, for the big things. The little things make a difference. There's no such a thing as bad gear. That's number four. There's no su such a thing as bad gear. It's just the wrong gear for the wrong environment. So don't think you have to go and get yourself a really expensive jacket. My weatherproofs are probably 25 pounds and it's probably the best thing I've, I've worn in the rain. Same with the tent. There's no point in getting a one person tent for two people. And if you're gonna get a cheap tent, don't expect it to do well in heavy rain, heavy winds, you know, hey, it might be quite a good tent if you just chuck it on the back of the car, drive it to a park, pop the tent on a nice sunny day, no issues. So don't be embarrassed 
or feel the necessity to have to get specific gear. Get the gear that is specific to what you're doing. Number five, <laughs> some regards to distance. There are many videos out there that talk about people going 20 miles a day, doing, you know, a hundred mile hike, wild camping, distance. It's, it's not, it's really not the main thing for hiking, at least not for us. This hike that we're doing now, it's got a grand total of 12 miles, maybe 14. And we're splitting that in two days. Can we do that in one day? Absolutely. Are we going to? No, why? We want to be out here. We came out here to enjoy the view and enjoy the peace and the quiet and the freedom. Uh, so yeah, don't be too bogged down by distance. You know, if it's a three kilometer hike, a one kilometer hike around, well, walk around the block, as long as you've seen something, you know, you know what they say, it's, it's not the, uh, it's not the destination, it's about the journey. And the journey is about enjoying what you're walking on and where are you going? Number six, size does matter. <laughs> I bet the guys love that. Oh, some didn't. But anyway, <laughs> size does matter. This links into, you know, getting the right gear. So I think the uh, first sleeping bags that we had, mine was from Tesco from about 14 years ago. And hers was probably a, a Wish.com very, very light piece of fabric that they put a, uh, a name on it for a sleeping bag. Uh, but size does matter. The, the second sleeping bags that we got, we thought, you know, we're gonna get cold. We don't wanna be miserable. We wanna have a comfortable, easy night. So I got an expensive sleeping bag. Didn't realize that it was synthetic or I didn't even look for it. And it was massive and, you know, weight and storage space in your rucksack backpack is limited if you're uh, wild camping. So size does matter. Before you buy anything, before you read, you know, if it's a sleeping bag, oh, it's minus 20, you know, find out exactly how much does it weight and how big it is. I think that was the uh, the biggest thing for us. We ended up sending it back and not actually using it because it took about more than a quarter of our backpacks. And that was just one item, one of the big three. And it's the same for tents as well. Get something that is appropriate uh, for yourselves. Don't have to be the biggest one and it doesn't have to be the smallest one. As long as you're comfortable in it, and you're willing to use the space for that in your backpack or carry the weight if it's something that it's really heavy. So take that into consideration. The size does matter. The big and the bulkiest, not always the best. And the smallest and the lightest, it's not always the best. You can get an ultra light sleepy mat, but the R value, how well it's gonna keep you warm at night. It's not very good. So yeah, so that's number six. Heading on to number seven. It does not have to be complicated. Hiking, malt campaign can be scary at first, especially when you see people with massive rucksacks, tons of gears and, you know, stuff and, you know, it looking really technical. Like it doesn't really have to be that complicated, it, including your route. Make a nice, easy route. If you have gone somewhere by car, plan a route that takes you back to the car, even if it's a loop. Sometimes you're gonna see stuff 
on the first half. On the second half, my might not be really nice, but don't make it complicated. Don't make it harder on yourself. It's about enjoying the outdoors. And the more work you put into making something, I want to see every single spot and I need to see every single thing. You're gonna put yourself under pressure and you're gonna end up not enjoying it. So yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. Make it simple. Number nine, nine. Eight, number eight, walking poles. As I walk around with my walking poles. These are inexpensive walking poles. They are made of aluminium with a cork handle. And if you haven't tried them, there's a lot of people out there that do trail running and it might not be for everyone. I'm not saying that it's a necessity, but all I'm going to say is give it a try. Being able to redistribute your weight into a walking pole, even if it's one, makes a massive difference. And we didn't realize that until we tried it. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to try it first. She, the other half, uh, did not want to use it. Thought it was too cumbersome. We have to carry it with you. These are collapsible. Uh, the one that the other half has, they're also not collapsible, but they're, they go inside of, uh, they're sort of collapsible. I can't think of the other word, but yeah, uh, walking poles. And number 10, I'm not even watching at this time. I've just gone back to the, uh, to the computer. Apparently, I have an issue with number three and number nine because I haven't included them. <laughs> Number nine, take time to appreciate what you've gone to say. I know this links in with another one of my points, but take your time. Sit somewhere for half an hour, for an hour. Enjoy the view. Don't rush it. The effort that you put in, you must get a reward. And the reward is not always just walking head down in a straight line. If you're challenging yourself and you're doing a marathon, a uh, time constrained hike, I understand. If you're just going for a normal uh, hike, you want to sightsee, I think the clue's in the name. You're going to sightsee. So you want to see it. So take your time. Don't rush it. Hopefully, that should be the two points that I've missed, and I might have included an extra bonus point. So keep watching. Let's go back to it, and let's go. And number ten, if you haven't realized now, the health benefits: hiking, just exercising, just being outdoors doing a couple of miles, maybe a mile, it gives you a much better health. Uh, well, it, it makes you healthier. Uh, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not going to sit here and explain the ins and outs. This is from my perspective. I think it does. Uh, I think a lot of people do it because it does. So, yeah, if you wanna be just a bit more fit, go for a hike in really deep <laughs> tall grass because <laughs> I don't want to get my shoes wet. But yeah, uh, that was 10 things I wish we knew before we started to hike. So hopefully now you guys know that. Take the ones that matter to you, the ones you guys think is valid and discard the ones that you disagree. But anyway, if you want to see more of our content, click that subscribe button, click that like button, and if you disagree or agree, leave us a comment why, or perhaps give you, or give us, your 10 reasons why hiking, well, 10 reasons, or give us 10 things you wish you knew 
before you started to hike. See you next time. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go, here's a bonus. Number 11. Things we wish you knew. If it gets too bad, abort. Call it a day. If you go somewhere and your intent is to either wild camp or do a hike, if it's too boggy, like it is here, all we've got is probably two and a half hours of boggy terrain. We'll call it a day. Unlikely we're going to be able to find a suitable spot to pitch a tent. If we were in a hike where we were going somewhere, that's a different story. Uh, you just make do with what you've got. But that wasn't our intent. So yeah, number 11 as a bonus. If you need to abort, call it a day, you can always go back. A lot of these places have been here, well, all of these places have been here for millions and millions of years. So it's definitely not going anywhere. I know our time here on this planet is limited, but don't put yourself in a uncomfortable position or a position that you're not going to be happy. This is about enjoyment. With that in mind, enjoy your hike, enjoy your camping.